The next news is a Muslim teen forced to remove hijab at airport in front of passengers. This happened in San Francisco, USA. A 12-year-old Muslim girl has laid out a complaint after being forced to remove her hijab in front of other passengers while boarding the flight into, um, in San Francisco. Okay, and this was an Air Canada agent that told her, you need to take that off. And he pointed at her scarf and she said, I can't. And he said, you have to. So the teenager, she's, she's a member of a U.S. national squash team, um, said that the airport refused her request to remove the hijab in a private room with only female staff present. Well, this was old news. Why this is coming back again? Is her case, go I think I think the reason why the case is, um, this is being reported again is because her case is moving forward or something like that, right? Or is this happening again? This is happening again. This is this is uh, new. Are you sure? So because I know that I remember that other ago, one. Air Canada it was air got uh, got yeah. reported on this, but this just happened to a girl in San Francisco, uh, oh. a twelve-year-old Muslim girl. Oh, the reason why I thought that this is the same because that one happened in Canada, right? This and this one... is Air Canada again. <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell is happening with Air Canada? And you think Canada would be the last country that would do something like this, right? Right. I mean. Why would, what was the reasoning that she has to take it off? I mean, you have metal detectors and all that stuff. Like you didn't, nobody asks us to take off clothing when we go through the security. I've, we have an experience. I have in Germany. I've oh. been asked to remove my clothes, but that's a, a different story. Um, okay, but were you taken in front of other people? Um, I had to fight for my right to be moved to a private room if they wanted me to continue taking off my clothes. And did you win that fight? Um, just barely. Okay. <laughs> I had, okay, well, I, that's ridiculous. It, it is, it, it's a long story. It's a different story. Okay, Let's stay okay. on. But people do need to remove things, um, especially in America, hmm. um, especially with the TAA agent. The TA a, I guess saying agent again is is crazy, but um, they they're they're trained. You know, women who wear under bras, underwire in their bras, um, sometimes get a hard time, um, and things have to get they have to touch you, they have to feel you. It's it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable flying. It's terrible. Sometimes they make you do things and you don't know why. Okay, um, Chris is saying so something in the live chat that I don't think is true, and I will tell you what. Maybe I'm wrong. Chris is saying. Um, this headline is misleading. According to TSA protocol, all head coverings must be removed. This includes baseball caps, uh, scarves, or other items. I don't... I've been to many airports in the United States. Um, women with hijab have, do not get asked to remove their hijab. So I don't know where are you getting this from, Chris? I haven't, I haven't seen that either. Um, even, even in my flights to Germany or, or Serbia, I went in with a lot of uh, women wearing head coverings that did not have to remove them. But um, B just saying it bothers me that they did it to a 12-year-old girl as well. What bothers me is that a 12-year-old girl is being forced to wear the hijab. I mean, I understand that um, yeah. some people say it's a choice, but uh, she's 12. And that bothers me because of what the hijab Yeah, they both bother me. Um, be, yeah. But, okay, so obviously I'm against their job and I get my guess everything that it represents. But but I also support people's right to wear the hijab, even though I'm right. against the hijab. Um, and I wonder, I just, what I wish we knew the reasoning for why Air Canada, I mean, could they, could they not provide her with a private place to do this? Right? Would that, by the way, would that be religious privilege or something? No. Hmm. No, that's not religious privilege because like I said, my with my with my personal instance in Germany, there are private rooms or at least places where you can pull a curtain hmm. uh, with with a TA um, TSA yeah, agent. But would it be religious privilege to say that I want the same private area that you would give to somebody if they were becoming naked or semi-naked? Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think so. I think that everyone has the, you know, like, like you were saying, everyone has the right to wear what they want to wear. If something makes them feel uncomfortable, I think anyone who feels uncomfortable removing anything off of their persons right. um, should be given a, a private room. If they have to wait for it, wait for it. Mm. Really? Like, what if I said I have a net scarf, a neck scarf? You have a net scarf and you feel so uncomfortable Taking that you off. have to only remove it in a room. You know, then then you understand you understand that you are also holding up those private rooms for women who have to remove their bras or women who have nope. to 
uh, remove their shirts, and, and you're going to have to wait for it. You're going to have to wait for your private room to remove your neck scarf. I, I I think that that's fine. Really, you think like if I said I really I really cannot, like if a security agent at the airport said like take off that neck scarf and like I can't I really feel naked about it if I take it off. Give me a I, private I think room. you're absurd, and I think that's absurd. But yeah. I think that if we have these private rooms available yeah. for people who need to remove items of clothing okay. um then i think that everyone should be welcome to them somebody saying she could have smuggled something beneath the scarf not i mean not really there's machines that would detect that i mean i could smuggle thing if if by that argument i mean you could put things in your underwear as well but nobody asks you to take off your underwear in front of everybody else. I mean, this could have been easily avoided if they just, like, take it off in a private area with a woman available instead of a man checking everything. This could have all been avoided. I don't. Th yeah, I agree. I don't think that's a, too much of a request. I don't think that's religious privilege. And again, this is not the government. This was Air Canada, right? This is Air Canada, yeah. So this is not the government. This was not the TSA agent. This was the... Wait, wait What? Like, does the airline actually does security check? Isn't it the TSA agents that do the security check? That's a, that's a really good question. Like, why uh, would the Air Canada, like, the Air, Air Canada, why would the airline ask you to, to do anything? Yeah, it's, it's not even their, if it's Air Canada, it's not even in their place to do, to take, ask you. Yeah, know what? Hmm. Uh, yeah, so reading the specific wording, it says that the Air Canada agent, um, Asked her to remove it while boarding a flight. Oh, that my, means oh shit. That is passed. way out of yeah. line. Yeah. That is way out of line. They're not even the security agent. They don't, they don't right. get to do that to anybody. Okay, right. forget it. This whole thing became a lot more clear. What the hell? Why would the Air Canada agent do that? This, they're not the TSA agent. Why have they been doing this? This is, this this is, is their this. second complaint in like two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get, your, get your shit together, Air Canada. What the hell? <laughs> All right, this is weird. This should become a lot more weird than I thought. Um, yeah, okay. All right, that makes my lot more sense. Let me see what the top comment is. Wow, this one got 800 comments. Wow. 1,000 reactions. And the top comment got 327 reactions. What the? This news got a lot of attention let's okay the top comment is long but i have to read it given that how much attention it got seth is saying this one got 327 reactions seth is saying while i disagree entirely with her religion as well as all religion i, I accept her right to observe and practice in religious traditions okay be careful we have to always try to understand the right to to religious freedom or is it a religious privilege Okay, so you have to always, every time you're analyzing a case, you have to understand which one of these two they are. If you're getting to do something that people, other people without a religion or without an excuse of a religion don't get to do, then it's not religious freedom, it's religious privilege. And you, nobody should be able to have religious privilege. But I agree that this is a freedom situation right here. However, at the airport, so Seth continues, however, at the airport, they have the right to search and inspect anyone, any of their belongings i think this one is misspelled uh, if you read the article she too respected uh, that but requested to remove her hijab in a private room with a female this is perfectly reasonable request the individual or individuals who refuse her request should be fired and charged with a hate crime okay i don't know if it okay so seth i was with you until that very last line because i don't know if it was a hate crime if you have proof that it was because of a religion then it would be a hate crime but we don't maybe this was just negligence it, it i'm not saying it was a hate crime but you can't just assume that um but i accept that it's a rare it's a so this is not a if it's air canada this is not about rights and stuff because it's not the government taking away your rights or anything like that. This is just very bad business <coughs> practice. And the consequences to a private company is fair. I think it's just it was just a very poor decision. And I do agree that whoever did this probably should be fired. But charged with hate crime, I don't know. Because I don't know what their motivations were. Were they maybe so out of touch with reality that they didn't know how bad this is going <laughs> to look? Especially given that it already happened to their company. Right? <laughs> right? Like, you would think that they would know by now. Like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do this. Like, if anybody would know 
<laughs> not to do this would be it would be them it would be because them. it already <laughs> happened <laughs> oh my god um uh, so okay so we have some hindu people in the comments like, actually saying uh, they make me take my belt off i'm very large bulky chap that that belt is a lifeline to hold my um straining pants up but you know what rules are rules and i'd rather fly for four hours than drive for two days simple she can enjoy her road trip next time that's that's nonsense actually i think if you if you say like listen if i take my belt off my entire pants will fall down for sure and i need a private room to do this i think that would also be a reasonable request uh for you to make right um i mean it's not and also again this is not at the tsa line okay they don't make you take off your belt before boarding by the airline they don't that do that is, that is the yes that is the <laughs> absolute point that needs to be made here right. she had already been cleared right she had already been cleared by security so unless they are saying that like they saw her stick something mysterious in there and somebody complained or whatever absurd reason they can come up with there is no reason no reason for them to ask anybody to take off anything i mean if i was there and i saw an, an airline employee come and say you need to take that off i if i was sitting there i would like oh shit this is gonna go viral like i could just see right there like i don't understand what was going through the employee's mind like i could be just be like yeah this is gonna be on the news isn't it so, like somebody's gonna record this this is gonna be a uh yeah. <laughs> like i could tell that this was this is gonna happen like i can't imagine what why couldn't the employee know that yeah i'm gonna probably lose my job over this um oh we have okay cool let me... Uh, Ali, did you want to add anything? Nope. By the way, guys, again, people... We need to find more news that just talk shit about Islam because people are going to think like we're more Islam apologists. Because... Right. I, <laughs> right. So tell, uh, tell Anne to give us some news that we could shit on Islam a little bit more often because... I, I think that people... Yeah, <laughs> people don't understand how much we do. Well, um, yeah. We okay, do that, just but to clarify, people, guys, and we we defend people, yeah, we defend not people. their religion. People mean. confuse the two. Yes. Okay. Just to just to make it clear, again, I'm going to say this, knowing full well that this is going to ruin the algorithm against this video, and we're going to get less visibility because of it. But just to make it clear with our audience, fuck Islam. Okay, fuck Islam. Fuck Allah. Fuck the Quran. Islam needs to die as an ideology. If it wasn't clear to you that we're against Islam just because we defend Muslims and we try to be sympathetic to the, to, towards them, we don't care about their feelings if their feelings is getting in the way of, of us fighting their ideology, okay? We do care about people's feelings if their feelings is not being used as a method to silence other people, okay? Uh, and we try and uh, sometimes we have a hard time realizing is this religious freedom or is it religious privilege and we try to think about it and we don't always get it right but we do want to protect people okay but that doesn't mean that we don't hate their religion because their religion is su sucks and it's barbaric it's ancient it's violent uh, and it's responsible for a lot of misery all around the world and it needs to die okay we believe that but we'll do that without being hostile towards people just to clarify for anybody that is new here um all right ali uh should i do you add anything or yeah if uh <laughs> speaking of you and i defending muslims on to our next news oh no atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening let's make it difficult for them to ignore us we have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. 
انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.